Order the uh, Thursday, April 14th, 2022, Historic Preservation Commission meeting to order. Um, we have uh, staff Erica Barrera mm -hmm. and uh, Fernanda, Fernanda, <laughs> and Matthew. Well, I should be better at this. Um, are here from the staff. Um, See, we probably need to do a roll call. Sure. Um, Chair O'Neill. Here. Vice Chair Smith Cavello. Here. Commissioner Collum. Here. Commissioner Dawson. Here. Commissioner Humbero, let us know that she would be absent. Um, Commissioner Rath. Here. And Commissioner Rodriguez. I hear. And just to reiterate, uh, staff members present are Principal Planner Roveri, Associate Planner Buggert, and myself, Recording Secretary Barrera. Thank you. Um, we're opening the consent agenda, I believe, with the approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any additions or corrections to the minutes for March 10th, 2022? Anyone? And could we Would... remind the public how to? Oh, sure. I'll remind the public how to participate um, and provide public comment. Members of the public are encouraged to join our meetings via Zoom Gov, a secure service that co connects you live with no lag time. This meeting is also streamed live on youtube.com forward slash city of Monterey and Comcast channel 25. If you would like to provide public comment, please join the meeting using Zoom or by telephone, making sure to join in time to accommodate delays. To join the Zoom meeting from a computer or phone, use the link or phone numbers on the agenda posted at isearchmonterey.org. Since this meeting has started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864, then enter the webinar ID. Today's webinar ID is 161-739-7120. If prompted for a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions for using Zoom are available at monterey.org forward slash public meetings. To provide public comment via Zoom, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. To provide comments by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand, then star six to unmute when called upon. Public commenters will be announced using their last three phone number digits or the name typed into Zoom. Public commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. Please turn off. TV or computer speakers or go into another room while connected as background noise interferes with the broadcast. Public speakers will be called upon in order of hands raised. There is a three minute time limit for today's meeting. Please stay within that limit. Thank you, Erica. Um, we have the minutes. Uh, do we have a motion to uh, accept? I so move. I'll second. Uh, Kathy seconds. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, um, I guess we have to call the roll to accept uh, the minutes as written. Sure. Chair O'Neill? Uh, yes. Vice <clears throat> Carvello? Yes. Commissioner Collum? Yes. Commissioner Dawson? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Humbero is absent. Commissioner Rath? Aye. And Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Great. Uh, the minutes have been approved with a vote of six. Thank you. Um, I don't believe we have anything else on the consent agenda. So I'm moving on to public comments. Is there, there is no one in this room uh, from the public. Is there anyone waiting to come in to make a comment um, or an look, item not on the agenda? Um, I don't see, there's one attendee, which is the applicant, I believe, John Wagner. Um, there's no hands raised. I think it's safe to move on. Okay, thank you. Um, closing public comments and moving on to agenda item number three, consider 260 Lane Street uh, for a historic permit to allow exterior alterations to the secondary structure and adoption of historic preservation report. Um, Matthew, I think you're presenting. It is showing up on us. Yeah, we've got it. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Buggert. I'm one of the associate planners with the City of Monterey's Planning Division. Today we're presenting on 260 Lane Street and to consider 260 Lane Street, uh, its historic permit and historic preservation report at today's commission hearing on April 14th, 2022. The recommendation from staff is that the Historic Preservation Commission adopt the resolution to both approve 260 Lane Street's historic permit to allow exterior alterations to the secondary structure and to adopt the historic preservation report. The location of the subject property is in the New Monterey area of the city. The zoning there is R35H2, which is medium density residential with uh, locally significant historic designation. You'll notice on the site there, this uh, area- Madam, Madam Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt, but us uh, Zoom people can not see the presentation. I don't know if there's a presentation being posted. I will see if I can fix that. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Ah, better. And speak up a little too. Apologies about that. The starting slide, 260 Lane Street to consider their historic permit and historic preservation report. Staff's recommendation to adopt the resolution to both approve the historic permit and allow exterior alterations to the secondary structure and adopt the historic preservation report. And the location of the subject property. On the left, there's an aerial of the city. It's in the new Monterey area on the northern side of town. And on the right, you'll see an aerial of the site. Uh, Google doesn't have a newer aerial of the site, but this is the, you can see the uh, primary historic structure and on the left side with the 260 on top of it. And there's a, a older square garage that used to be on the site. To provide some background about this project and the approvals that have taken place so far, the property came under a Mills Act contract in uh, 2020 as an H2 property, locally significant. And during the Mills Act uh, acceptance and consideration, it included the original, original proposal for replacement of the garage on site with a two-story secondary structure. This was presented to HPC back in 2020. In June of 2021, uh, the building plans for that secondary structure were approved. Those were based on plans from earlier on in 2020. And construction for that secondary structure began in the second half of last year in 2021. And then late in 2021 and earlier this year, the applicant applied for alterations uh, to, that secondary, to that secondary structure, which required a historic permit. That historic permit requires presentation in front of the Historic Preservation Commission, which is why we are here today. So here's where the property stands today. Uh, the, the story poll noticing, you'll notice in orange netting at the top is the portion that we are considering today. The primary historic residence is on the right side, the green structure, and the new secondary structure is on the left. This is from the rear of the property and is not really visible from the street, but you might be able to see some corner edges if, you, <laughs> if you're looking for it from the front. So ultimately the existing setting on site is the primary historic structure and the secondary non-historic structure, which is partially built. The proposed alteration is to extend the roof over the second story rear balcony of the secondary structure, including associated posts above the railing. The site plans that are, were approved were 
you can see there was a deck in the rear. So the front of the property is at the bottom of the screen and the rear of the property is at the top of the screen. Originally, there was a, a pitched roof in the back and there were a couple walls on either side and a small balcony railing on the back. The proposed addition is for this additional roof area to cover that, that rear balcony area. This is a straight on view from the rear. The proposed addition is this lower pitched roof here. And the next few slides will, so, will show some closer up images of the difference between the originally proposed roof and the newly proposed roof. The approved plans depicted on the right show the relationship between the secondary structure, the new secondary structure to the original house. The approved structure did, did not have the, uh, the roof going over this rear balcony area that had a partial wall. And the proposed plans include that, that pushed out roof to, to cover the rear balcony. And the reason that the roof is reduced right here slightly in comparison to that roof on the left is to adhere to the 25 foot height requirement of the R3 zone district. For a straight on view of it, a little closer up, originally the, the roof and, and uh, the balcony supports going up to the railing and the proposed alteration on the right with the balcony beams going up to support the roof. Story poles and notices were put out for this property. The netting on the left shows about where the, where the roof would reach to. And then you can also see it from ground view on the right. A historic assessment was originally prepared for this project for the original design of the building, uh, prepared by Seth Bergstein, architectural historian, noting that the primary historic structure was built in 1912 and was considered historic. And the previous garage on site built in 1940 was not considered historic. And the historic assessment also asserted that the structure rebuild would consist of property rehabilitation, would remain secondary in, uh, in comparison to the primary structure and could be removed in the future without affecting the primary historic structure. For this historic permit, a addendum was created for that 2019 report submitted in late last year and the findings of that report were that the proposed alterations are part of the site's rehabilitation of the previous garage. The site maintenance would be in accordance with the Mills Act, and the proposed alterations would not affect standards one through eight of the standards for rehabilitation due to occurring on the secondary non-historic structure. There are two additional standards for uh, Secretary of Interior that will be discussed on the following slides. Standard nine, that new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction would not destroy historic materials, features, and spatial relationships that characterize the property. The report addendum noted that the added roofs, the added roofs pitch and design would sufficiently differ from the roof pitch on the historic house. Standard 10, New additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. The finding was that the addition of the extended roof conforms to the standard as the entirety of the secondary structure could be removed, not just the added roof portion, but the entirety of it could be removed in the future without impacting the historic integrity of the primary house. The historic documentation that's been prepared for the project must be adopted as the historic preservation report for approval of the historic permit. 
So the historic documentation to date would be adopted as the historic preservation report. And it's largely focused on the secondary structure as that's what the project includes. There's a special condition that staff has included in the resolution that the historic preservation report shall be amended by the Historic Preservation Commission if the report scope is exceeded to include alterations to the primary historic structure. We wanted to include this because while this is generally required for any project, the historic documentation focuses mostly on the secondary structure. And so anything that happens in the future, we wanted to make sure that the historic preservation report is similarly updated to include the primary structure. Regarding public comment, there has been one letter received and it was earlier today. The comment letter had four items included stating one, that the site is not necessarily unique or historic, two, that the French doors and decks were not characteristic of the era in which it was constructed, three, it questioned the resale of the secondary structure, and four, inquires about the loss of revenue to the city due to Mills Act property designations. It should be noted that the letter did not include specific comments about the roof extension or design, but these other items are, are included for consideration. Um, resale of the secondary structure, uh, an EDU, a property could be, cannot be subdivided with an ADU under SB9. Uh, if somebody wanted to subdivide this property in the future, they would require review through Historic Preservation Commission, dividing structure of the property lines, and so on and so forth. So the recommendation from staff is to approve historic permit HP 220051 for exterior alterations to the secondary structure and to adopt the historic preservation report at 260 Lane Street with the included special condition. With that, that concludes staff's presentation. And I know that the applicant is also on the line and available for questions and may have a word or two to talk about the project. Thank you, Matthew. Um, before we go to the applicant, does, do any of the commissioners have questions of staff? Cheryl? I just have one note for people that may not be able to see the screen. You referred to um, the area of Monterey as north because in the way it was depicted in the map, it looked higher, but it's actually kind of considered south as you go down the state. It's, you know, so it, it's on the south side of the city. Everyone's just, confused about that. Yeah. Pay no I, attention I understand. to which <laughs> side the ocean's on. Yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> just in case they're wondering where, yeah. where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just I would like to confirm that the sides of the porch on the mm -hmm. secondary unit, um, there are solid walls on the sides of the deck. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant, would he or she like to say anything? Um, I see that John Wagner is in attendance and his hand is he raised. He raised his hand. I'll go ahead and allow him to talk. Okay, thank you. And I've asked him to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Well. Yeah, um, Matt, thank you for the presentation. And, uh, you know, what to say about it, I, I think it um, is, is, is a clear improvement to the neighborhood. We've got nothing but positive comments from everybody on a daily basis, um, considering what this, what it looked like when we first bought the the home to where it is today um and people are just they, they kind of just watch it as an ongoing project because it seems as if it's been ongoing since we bought it nearly seven years ago and uh you know the negative or the letter that came in i'm not sure what that is but um as a whole people are happy that the that it's been the property's being improved the community's being improved and um I just appreciate the support of Matt and getting it to this point. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. Thank you. Uh, do any of the commissioners have questions of the applicant? Gerald? Thanks. Um, it, you know, having lived here for a few years now, I can see why you might begin a project thinking in you know, the, the porch without a roof 
would be good, but after a while, um, you know, once in a while we have pretty bad rains, we have some winds, and I think the porch actually will cover the porch and protect the building, and I think it's a good addition. So um, I, I can understand how it, you could start a project thinking one way and then after being here a little longer, evolve to uh, uh, in include a little more porch protection. And it looks good. Mm -hmm. you know, if I, I can explain how we ended up where we are, um, this design is, is nothing close to what we originally had requested. And we worked with um, the city and trying to conform uh, to meet neighbor concerns about viewports and, and, and different issues. And so we moved the building. Uh, it originally was supposed to be attached to the building. Then we moved it away from the main structure, moved it down the hill, moved it up, moved it sideways. We had about seven different versions of this. And, um, and with that, it took a long time and it took a lot of money. Every time our architect had to redraw the plans and I, he just kept billing me and I kept paying him. And then we'd get a request, well, what if we moved it this way? Or what if we moved it down the hill? Or, and so every time we did it, and, and if I'm being honest, I got to the point where when I finally got some light at the end of the tunnel, like, hey, this might work. Let's just get this thing drawn and approved and over with. And, um, and that's what we did. It got approved. And then once we started building it, it was like, wait a minute, there's no roof up there. And it, it was just an oversight and, and maybe excitement and just getting the, this finally approved. And then that's when we came back. So we have to have a roof on it. It was, it would be silly not to. So that's, that's why we ended up where we are. So I appreciate that uh, we were hopefully are gonna get this thing moving forward now. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, questions? Uh, and we'll discuss this after I close the public comment. Okay, no more questions of the applicant. Are there any public comments on 260 Lane Street? I'll just remind the public how to provide public comment. Uh, members of the public are encouraged to join our meetings via ZoomGov, a secure service that connects you live with no lag time. To join the meeting from a computer or phone, use the link or phone numbers on the agenda posted at iSearchMonterey.org. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864, then enter the webinar ID. Today's webinar ID is 161-739-7120. To provide public comment via Zoom, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. To provide comments by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute when called upon. Public commenters will be announced using their last three phone number digits or the name typed into Zoom. Um, there are no other attendees um, besides the applicant, so I think it is safe to move on. Okay, thank you. I am closing public comment and bringing it back to the commission uh, for discussion and hopefully a uh, motion. Anyone have any comments? Well, I will comment and say that I have a neighbor who is a um, Canepa and one of the heirs, and they are um, just delighted with what the original house, um, the restoration that's been done in there. They they are very excited about it. Um, so, uh, oh, is Linda? Does Linda? No, Linda. That was probably. Oh, it's Carol Dawson has a hand. She's waving. Yes, thank you. Carol. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. First of all, um, I'd like to say that um, this is a clear improvement. I mean, the the, the workmanship it, it's it's beautifully done. Um, however, um, I have the same comment I had before. I I do not think that it um, that the um, secondary structure complies with the Secretary of the Interior standards because if you take a look at packet page twenty five, um, the the front. Um, elevation. Um, it looks very similar um, with the siding, the windows, the roof slope, the shingles, and the gutters. And in, in the back, um, you've also got the um, the posts and the corbels. Well, it looks very similar. Anyway, that's my comment. Thank you, Carol. Uh, any other comments? Would anyone like to make a motion? I can um, make a comment. Maybe okay, sure. I actually considered that looking at it and I, 
uh, I, we stopped today and just sat there looking at both of the buildings from the street side. It's very difficult to see it uh, from the ocean side because the buildings block it. You know, you just you just can't see it. But uh, corners of it, but you can't get the feeling of how how they compare. But from the street, I could see that it um, was distinguished. It wasn't. Um, it didn't look like it was from, you know, a, you know, a, a dramatically different time. It it looked like it it fit, but it didn't look the same at all to me. I think it's just the design of the building and more in the details. I I I like the little. I don't know if you call them eyelashes or eyebrows over the window. Just a, just a little subtle mm -hmm. touch yeah. there, nice. and that wasn't on the original. I I just saw them as different, but I saw them as being able to live there together, you know, to be close and be uh, comfortable. And so I'm happy to make a, a motion to improve the um, the changes in the plans, the extension of the roof to make the porch, the creation of the, you know, roof uh, pillars or stanchions to hold up the roof. and um, and I, I agree with uh, the comments that, um, that it is a substantial improvement. And I like the idea that staff help them consider different uh, approaches. And of, of course, you know, many of us are on the, the commission because we like to see these old interesting properties uh, maintained and um, be useful to current uh, families and other people here. And I think it's a good example. Was there a motion at the beginning so of that? In the <laughs> middle, it was sort of in the middle. Yeah, I, I make a motion to um, um, accept the recommendation of the staff. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Oh. Go ahead. Linda. Okay, Linda, um, Linda Rath seconded it. Um, I just um, want to, my piece on this, um, what is compatible and what is different. And I think that's a very subjective thing, which is why we're all here, um, is what is different enough and what is, so um, it's supposed to be compatible, um, yet different. So um, I think it's compatible personally. So um, is there any more discussion? Can we? Let's call a vote on the motion then, Erica. Chair O'Neill. Aye. Vice Chair Smith Carvello. Aye. Commissioner Collin. Aye. Um, Commissioner Dawson. Aye. Commissioner Rath. Aye. And Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Okay, this motion carries with a vote of six. This decision is appealable to the Planning Commission. Applications can be found online or in the Planning Office. Thank you, Erica. Um, we are now moving on to commissioner comments. Um, anyone have anything of note? Um, I will note that uh, my husband's on cultural arts commission committee mm -hmm. and they uh, it was rumored that the uh, art um, Monterey Art Association across the street might be looking at doing something with that building. And I believe that's historic, isn't it? The Monterey the Museum? Art Museum? Art? Yeah. Yeah. I have Mark. to look into it. Yeah. It was a funeral home. It's mm -hmm. not it a mortgage. County mortgage. It's nice. Oh. Than... <laughs> oh, funeral. What did you say? <laughs> going to give it a good. Well, they're going, so. they're going to be moving eventually, aren't they? Where that nursery? I don't know. Was? I'm just throwing that out that I heard a rumor that they're going to be looking at uh, doing something with that building. And okay, um, I believe it is historic. Is that correct? I can find out. Yeah, I, yeah, I can report back. I remember going in See, there and yeah, yeah, report any updates. Yeah, on that. that's thank you. I know there were dead bodies involved. <laughs> uh, I did. I did. Any I any that. other commissioner? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, 
I'm, um, you know, optimistic that we'll continue to um, be able to have um, historic activities. And we see a couple of examples coming up. Um, we've heard a, a couple of um, lectures on historic issues, as well as uh, on, um, on Saturday, June 4th, we will have a Merienda. So oh. our last Merienda was in uh, 2019. And as we were planning in March for the 2020 and the big celebration of the 250th anniversary of, of the um, establishment of Monterey, we were you know, shut down because of COVID. So it's great to see some of these things coming back. And we hope the city is also moving toward uh, bringing back the celebration in some form because we have a large sculpture that of uh, kind of abalone shell looking that I haven't heard an update on what the plans are for that. And I'm just looking forward to um, all of these uh, things coming back into our lives uh, for everybody. And another interest is so if you're interested, there are about 30 tickets left. It's almost to sell out. And we're just a little over two months ahead. So get your tickets soon if you want to go to the Merienda. It's at the memory garden behind the Pacific house. And it celebrates the origins of Monterey. A lot of music, pinatas in the trees. A lot, it's a lot of fun. So there, there are still tickets and the public is welcome to, to buy them. And, um, and I say that it is put on by Monterey History and Art Association. And you can find that in, in on the web MHAA, Monterey History and Art Association. And, uh, and then another interesting uh, uh, event that I just received is the dedication for a marker for the Spanish patriot Ignacio Vicente Vallejo. And we've heard the name Vallejo in connection with um, a city and other historic areas. And that's Sunday, June 12th. And it, this event is uh, from the Daughters of the American Revolution. They're placing the, the, the marker there. And it's located at the historic Royal Presidio Chapel, also known as San Carlos Cathedral. So it's Sunday, June 12th at about 1.15. And I think uh, it'll be nice to, to hear about what the city's plans are for our, our, our late 250 year celebration <laughs> yeah, who thought it would be two years late celebrating that um any other commissioner comments uh yes uh, carol well i mentioned last time about uh, tuning into some of the library's programs so i was just looking at the email they sent me uh next thursday the 21st at four o'clock Tune in every third Thursday for Monterey's Magical History Tour with local historian Tim Thomas. We all know about him, I think. This month, uh, he's going to be uh, having Susan Schillinglaw, uh, who wrote a great book on Steinbeck. And um, she was, at San she was uh, the professor in the English department at San Jose State and a director uh, at the Steinbeck Center in, in Salinas for a while too. I remember that. And uh, so they, and they have, uh, they're doing a dine around town now trying to raise money where uh, they just did Chipotle yesterday. And then Vince DeGirolamo, I'm not good pronouncing that name, sorry. Saturday, April 23rd, uh, he has written a book, The History of America's Newsboys, Crying the News. So again, you can find out more details about these programs at the library, uh, but they are interesting. And that's what I report every year, the different programs I attend or listen to, whatever. So um, very educational. Thank you. Uh, anyone else, any of the other commissioners have comments? Okay, I'm looking for, uh, Linda, You are, is that a hand? That is a hand, yeah. Um, I just wanted to, speaking of the library, they did a, a talk at the um, Japanese American JACL community league, whatever that is, yeah. on their movie that they just completed called Enduring Democracy, the Monterey Petition. 
it's very well done. And I think the library is going to post that on their website. Um, you can stream the movie. Um, I think it's cost $3.99 to stream it, but it's very well done. And it's part of the um, Monterey history that I had no idea. So it was very interesting. Yeah, uh, we attended the opening of the wonderful um, uh, museum in the basement of the JACL, Japanese American Cultural League, yeah, uh, just, just something like that. March. Yeah, it was the day before we all shut down and we were shoulder to shoulder in yes. there breathing on each other. And so. Just did something recently with Tim Thomas there. Yeah, too. yeah, he's their curator. Yes. He's, yeah. Okay, um, I see no other hands waving or anything else on the screen. Uh, staff, any reports, comments? Um, so every year, since we're a certified local government, um, we are required to report our trainings, our, uh, all of the HPC members' trainings. However, we have not received a template um, to complete that report, so that's why it's been delayed. Usually it's toward the beginning of the year that I bring the report in front of you, but we don't have a template from the State Historic Office of Preservation. So and you're speaking of last year's training. Yeah. So yeah. you have our information, you just can't report it yeah, out. Okay. That's right. Okay. But just keep track of your trainings because we're gonna yeah. need that information for next year's right. report. Okay. And yeah. and all of that if we all did the um, camp training from San Jose. Um, um, I know that would, would count. Yeah. And the um, California Preservation Foundation. Yeah, uh, they often have free um, uh, sessions. Some are better than others. Mm -hmm. um, all right, do we have any, is that the planning office update? Yes. Okay, anything else, commissioners, staff, anyone? online. All right. It's not a record, but not too bad. We are adjourned. <laughs>